Hibbert. Roy Hibbert. I saw a video, boy. With Stephen A, that you've got to tell our audience at home. I'm, I'm stunned. It pleases take this on national TV because I'll be, I'll be accused of instigating it if I do it. You go ahead and tell them what you told me just now. DC, I went to a WWE event, SummerSlam, and Kwame Brown had just gotten drafted. And uh, I went ahead and tried to go shake his hand. You know, I'm a 6'10", you know, a guy, he's 6'11", 6 6'10", 6 and I thought he would be you know, reciprocating. And he looked me up and down, just walked by with an entourage. And I said, you know, one day I'm going to go, I'm going to get to the league and, uh, and, and show him, give him the business. <laughs> Kwame Brown! Kwame Brown! That's not the end of the Look you up and down and put and shake your hand and hold it to his other part. He had an entourage? Kwame Brown? What is this world? What is this world coming to? That's part of the story is your first NBA bucket came against? Too good to be true. Well, that ain't hard. That ain't hard. It's still too good to be true. Did you dunk on him? No, I don't know. First of all, you know. You know, I said, you know, I'm not going to talk to him. You know, I felt disrespected, you know, but um, he was probably going through a tough time. You know. How is that really? Really, when he first came into the league, that was before he ever played, so we didn't know how bad he was. So it wasn't, it wasn't a tough time at that particular moment in time. He was the number one overall pick in the draft. Nobody had a clue how MFP would end up being. And then, you are, and here you are, trying to be who picked him? Who? Picked Kwame. Who chose him number one? Stop being a man like you, Jordan. Be nice. Be nice. You lying like a motherfucker. Anybody who know me know damn well I wouldn't walk past no kid. And you should see the dumb shit you said. Stephen A up there looking like a the Grinch that stole Christmas. What did Kwame Brown say to you? Tell him. Tell him all over the world. What did he say to you? Well, <laughs> big goofy punk bitch. <laughs> I said he walked past me and he was 6'11 and I thought because I was 6'10 he was gonna talk to me but he walked past me with his entourage bitch you lying my entourage wouldn't have came with me to no goddamn WWE or whatever your punk ass said you lying bitch my entourage only came with me to the club motherfucker they ain't come with me to the gym they wasn't with me when I was shooting in the gym <laughs> They ain't go me to the gym. You motherfuckers ain't going with me nowhere but to the club and the hotel. <laughs> so I know you lying, bitch. Why did you let them people pay you to do that, bitch? And you dusty ass, dead Dracula face. Skip Bayless, why when I look at your face, bitch, something about your face just make me want to say, I want to suck your blood. <laughs> <laughs> mama's cooking, bitch. I'm gonna get all you motherfucking punk bitches. I told you, you gonna get my mama seasoning and spices, bitch. I'm gonna fuck wrong with you. You gonna bring this little punk ass knock knee, bitch. I'm gonna kick his ass when I get in the league. I'm gonna kick it, bitch. You ain't do it. I dumped on your bitch ass in Indiana. Go look at the tape. I went right round your dumb ass and wow, man, I was heavy as hell. Then I was just coming back from an injury. So, bitch. A uh, mission not accomplished. Punk ass bitch. Let me go in there and kick his ass. <laughs> Shut the fuck up, bitch. I ain't never walked past no kid with my auntie, bro. They told you all the words to say, didn't they? You little knock me, bitch. That's what they told you to say, didn't they, boy? Tell the truth. Tell the goddamn truth. Roy Hibbert. Roy Hobart, you gonna get some of this mama's cooking, bitch. You was a paid monkey. Shut your bitch ass up, nigga. I would never walk past no kid. You walk up to me and tell me you play ball. Bitch, you lying. You went up there with that dead face, bitch, uh, Skip Bayless. Looked like he ain't got no blood going to his goddamn face tissue. Yo shit whiter than a... Boy, your shit whiter than this napkin but holding this shit up. You was one ugly, dry face bitch. And you got them hair follicles. You know what, bitch? You set up there the last episode, tried to be nice with Shannon Shaw. He thought I wasn't gonna see that, huh, bitch? Yeah, but I see it. Flat foot hoe. You lucky you old as fuck, cause I'll find out who the fuck you with and give her some of this. <laughs> Yo, 
and Stephen A, bitch, you the devil. You sit there having this grown ass man lie because he don't like me. Y'all, what the fuck is wrong with y'all? What the fuck did I do to y'all bitches? Jesus Christ. Bitch went around the world just giving out cues of who y'all think of. Look at him, he walking past kids. Look at him, college is here, bus. Look at him. What the fuck is wrong with you motherfuckers, man? You motherfuckers sick. I think I need to sue your ass, Stephen A, for harassment for 20 motherfucking years. I might need to sue your company. Who the, what the, what was y'all thinking? I really want to know. What was you teaching the kids at the college? Whether I'm a bus or not, what the fuck was you doing there teaching them, boy? What was they learning? What was the value of you being at a college campus, sir? Talking about my likeness. Did I just say that? 
Falcons because the Dallas Mavericks have been hurt the whole season. And the Dallas Mavericks don't have pretty much anything else. So they have some other things. The Heat makes look good. So they have actually other guys who can play. But he is the guy. I'm not still calling still them scrubs. I'm saying they're in the lottery. They're irrelevant. They don't exist. If it were not for Luka Doncic, it's for the Period. For hurt all year. That's true. He's not hurt for this series. He's going to play, be playing in this series. And he was the pivotal guy last year. When he was playing, they were better than the Clippers. When he was out, they were worse than the Clippers. Or the Clippers. But when you get a feather and you throw it by Luka Doncic, uh, uh, just that for Zingas, and he's out for two weeks because of it, because he got hit by a feather. You can't expect him to survive a feather. You know what I'm saying? Come on. Tim, we did rehearse for this. This is raw emotions. Blank canvas, paint us a picture of what we just saw. Also, if you could have the statistics and historical evidence, that'd be great. <laughs> All right, Katie, well, what I just saw.